Large capacity roads have to be built to accommodate our growing population, but the roads in today's video take things to a whole new level. These are just some of the most mind-boggling and confusing intersections in the world. So join me as we count down the top 15 most crazy intersections. Number 15. Mesquil Square, Addis Ababa Set in the heart of Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, Mesquil Square has developed a reputation as being the most insane intersection in the world. The city has trouble with traffic at the best of times, and with so many vehicles trying to pass through, the fact that this particular crossing hasn't, for decades, had any road markings or traffic lights has made it a free-for-all, with drivers needing to push their way through oncoming cars to have any chance of making the turns that they need. The square has been a huge importance to Ethiopians, as it's the focal point of the Mescal Festival, which has been held annually for more than 1,600 years and is the Ethiopian Orthodox Church's commemoration of the moment when the crucifix was revealed to Empress Helena of Constantinople. When it's held on September 27th, tens of thousands of people gather in the square following flaming torches as they congregate around a burning pyramid that's kept alight until dawn. There are also several memorials around the square in recognition of some of the darker times from Ethiopian history, which attract large numbers of people throughout the year, and there's long debate surrounding who actually owns the square, with various factions claiming it for themselves. But this has meant that no one has taken the responsibility on of trying to sort out the problems with the traffic. Even if there was an agreement of what could be done, it wouldn't be as easy as adding traffic lights because of the mixed use of the space. And while there was an opportunity to try to do something recently, a huge development simply added parking spaces and a mall. The road markings, or lack of them, are also in line with the theories of a Dutch traffic engineer, Hans Mondermann, who actually argued that the presence of signage actually increases safety. He said that the removal of all safety features forces drivers to be far more aware of their surroundings instead of blindly following the rules, and so makes everyone far more aware. Anyone who has actually tried to drive through central Addis Ababa during rush hour may well have a different opinion to that approach. Number 14. Shibuya Crossing, Tokyo Found in front of the Hachiko exit of Shibuya Station in Tokyo, the Shibuya Crossing is one of the most famous and busiest pedestrian crossings in the world. It was first opened in 1973. The district has since been heavily built up around it, and it's there that you'll find the statue of Hachiko, a famous Akita dog that's waited for its owner for nine years after his death, and is a popular meeting space, as well as countless stores like one of the planet's busiest Starbucks, and illuminated advertising boards that are as iconic as those in Times Square or New York, or Piccadilly Circus in London. Once described as being an example of what Tokyo does best when it's not trying, this crossing, while it looks crazy, is actually an extremely efficient way of managing pedestrian and vehicular traffic. There's a green light for those on foot every two minutes, and recent estimates have suggested that each time this happens, as many as 3,000 people walk across. On the busiest days, half a million people will use the crossing, and even on the quietest days, that figure is around 260,000, and there's very little difference between how busy it is during the middle of the day and the middle of the night. Officially known as the Shibuya Scramble Crossing, one of the more surprising elements of it is that even with the frequency of people crossing the roads, there are rarely any traffic jams, even during rush hour. That's partly a testament to the overall traffic management strategy in Tokyo, both because of the layout of the roads and the provision of reliable and affordable public transport, but also because extensive modeling of people and traffic flows have allowed the timings of the signals at the crossing to be perfected to keep everyone moving. Number 13. The Magic Roundabout, Swindon No matter where you live in the world, you'll most likely have to use roundabouts on your road network, as they're features that are used in almost every country. They're designed to keep a constant flow of traffic moving while connecting several routes. They're often much easier and efficient than the alternative, which would usually be a crossroads with traffic lights. Not all roundabouts are the same, however. There's also one in the town of Swindon in the UK that's become famous for its unusual design. Known locally as the Magic Roundabout, after a children's TV show, locals will tell you that it's really easy to use this junction, but when you approach it for the first time, you'll almost certainly be confused. First thing to remember about the roundabout is that in the UK, vehicles drive on the left-hand side of the road instead of the right, like most countries in the world, and this means that when they use roundabouts, they travel in a clockwise direction instead of an anti-clockwise one. 
This gets a bit more complicated at the magic roundabout though, because it's actually made up of five mini roundabouts that are all arranged around a central circle that itself looks like a roundabout, but isn't technically considered to be one. This essentially creates an outer circle and an inner circle, and gives a number of total different paths between the feeder roads. You can, for example, simply use the outer circle to go around the mini roundabout in a clockwise direction until you reach the exit you need. Or, if you're feeling braver, there may be a quicker way. Instead, you use the mini roundabout you approach to enter the inner circle, where you travel anti-clockwise or the opposite direction, and can reach the exit on the right without having to travel around the entire thing. That's right, this is a design of a roundabout that allows you to travel in either direction around it, and it's no wonder that anyone who's used it before finds it so strange. Amazingly though, it's had this layout for more than 50 years and has been found to reduce the number of accidents that cause injuries by more than 75%. Although the main reason for this is that drivers are often so confused that they drive too slowly to be able to cause any damage. Number 12. The Nanpu Bridge Interchange, Shanghai In the past few decades, China has invested heavily in the development of transport infrastructure to make it far easier to travel across the country. Shanghai is, of course, one of the busiest places in the city, with many millions of commuters trying to cross districts each day. Before the 1990s, those wanting to travel between Puxi and Pudong, the entertainment and cultural centers of the city that are home to almost half of all its residents, had to use a ferry that crosses the river that separates the two. But in 1991, the six-lane Nanpu Bridge was opened to make the crossing far easier. Originally catering to around 17,000 vehicles a day, but now registering almost 10 times that number, one of the challenges designers faced when building the bridge was to how to connect it to the road network. There were already wide roads passing along the riverbank, but there's one thing that there's a complete lack of in a central city location like this. Space. Engineers had to be creative with how they'd make this work, and the result was one of the most spectacular but crazy interchanges in the world. As part of a collaborative approach between the Shanghai Urban Design Institute, the Shanghai Engineering Design Institute, and the Shanghai Urban Construction College, the decision was made to use a circular spiral design to lift vehicles from ground level up to the required height to cross the bridge. When it opened, the bridge changed transport around the city, and it's now one of the most important bridges that crosses the Huangpu River. But it's also become notorious because of this spiral approach, which can make you feel like you're turning forever, particularly in traffic, until you finally can straighten your wheel and continue on with your journey. Number 11. High Five Interchange, Dallas Urban planners often find themselves having to redesign road layouts that have worked for decades in response to increasing traffic volume. What was once perfectly adequate can begin to falter under high loads, and that's exactly what happened in Dallas at the junction between the Lyndon B. Johnson Freeway, or Interstate 635, and the Central Expressway, or Highway 75. Originally, there was a three-level cloverleaf interchange, but this reduced the US-75 to two lanes and forced traffic to slow down to travel around the loops, which was creating a huge bottleneck and huge traffic jams during peak times. In 2002, a $261 million project began to replace it with the city's first five-level stack interchange. And now known as the High Five, it was completed by the end of 2005. Amazingly, the finished structure is made up of 60 miles or almost 100 kilometers of additional highway, over 43 bridges, and 710 support tiers. Reaching as high as a 12-story building, some of the ramps reach 100 feet or 30 meters above the ground, and the lanes of US-75 actually pass through the interchange at 20 feet or 6 meters below ground level. There's even a hiking and biking trail that runs beneath the entire structure. It was an absolutely monumental task to build this thing, but it's proven to be a major success. Not only does it easily accommodate the more than half million vehicles that pass each day, but it removed the bottleneck problems, and while locals will still tell you that traffic can be an issue there at some times of the day, it's a massive improvement over what it used to be like. The High Five was named the Public Works Project of the Year in 2006, but it's still one of the strangest roadways in the world. With what's been described as being a labyrinth of lanes that you need to navigate properly, otherwise you may end up going around and around in circles before finding the proper exit. Number 10. Parc Nou de la Trinitat, Barcelona Cities around the world need to provide for the people that live there, as well as making sure traffic can freely move to support the economy, and planners are constantly keeping these often conflicting priorities in mind. 
a major initiative that's seen in countries around the world is the importance of the protection of green spaces, like Central Park in New York, which give residents respite from the concrete jungle they are otherwise surrounded by. Of course, space is at a premium for initiatives like this, and planners in Barcelona, Spain, found themselves needing to think outside the box, which resulted in the creation of a new public park with a difference, the Parque Nou de la Trinitat. Located in the northeastern part of the city, the almost 15-acre park is actually completely within a circular and complex motorway junction. With countless lanes of converging traffic and tens of thousands of vehicles passing each day, they've used bands of vegetation, flowing water, and carefully placed paths and ledges to create a sense of tranquility from the surrounding. And amazingly, when you're in the center of the park, you can't see any of the intersection at all. It's a great example of how thoughtful planning can minimize the impact of huge intersections like this one, which are a necessity in any large transport network. This park was originally opened in 1993, and designers from across the planet have looked at it and what was learned from its success and incorporated elements into their own designs too. Surprisingly, it's been found to improve safety on the roads themselves, believed to be the result of drivers passing by the green oasis and feeling far calmer than they perhaps would have done if they had continued along a soulless highway. Number 9. Katipara Junction, Chennai Found in Chennai, which is the capital city of India's southernmost state, Tamil Nadu, the Kathipara Junction was first opened in 2008. It's at the intersection of four extremely important arterial roads, the Grand Southern Trunk Road, the Inner Ring Road, the Anasalai, and the Mount Punamali Road, and in theory makes the transition between each of them seamless. Originally, the junction was a roundabout with a huge statue in the center, but because it was at the confluence of four busy highways, tailbacks were common, and drivers were being forced to be aggressive to have any chance of completing their journey. The decision was made then to build a six-lane cloverleaf-grade separator to replace it, and at an estimated cost of $61 million, it was completed by 2008. It became, and still is, the largest cloverleaf junction in South Asia, and was the first of three that were built on the Chennai Inner Ring Road that have now substantially improved the daily congestion problems that were developing. While it may look complete, plans for the site haven't ended yet, and the land underneath the junction has been earmarked for further development. It'll be the site, for example, of a brand new bus station, as well as an entertainment venue such as an open-air theater, food courts, and stores, as well as some office space and parking, all of which will be directly accessible by an off-ramp from the Catepara Junction itself. Number 8. Avenida Nueve de Julio, Buenos Aires Passing through the center of Buenos Aires, the capital city of Argentina, the Avenida Nueve de Julio, or translated to English, the July 9th Avenue, is the main transport artery in the region. It's named in honor of Argentina's Independence Day, and while it's not technically an intersection in its own right, it is bisected by a number of other roads that create a series of some of the trickiest junctions to navigate in the whole world. Running around 1.9 miles or 3 kilometers from near the Rio de la Plata waterfront to Constitucion Station, it has up to seven lanes running in each direction, double lane parallel streets to support it on either side, and a metro bus rapid transit line along the center. This all combines to make it by far the widest avenue anywhere on Earth, and although the original plans to build it were drawn up in 1888, it wasn't until 1935 when work began, and in the 1980s when it was completely finished. Once you're on the avenue, it's easy to drive a distance and a reasonable speed through one of the South America's most congested cities, but it takes quite some effort to get to that stage in the first place. There are countless roads that feed into it, and drivers essentially have to navigate their entry and exit points into a road that, at its widest, has as many as 20 lanes when you include everything. So it takes a huge amount of confidence to make your move. When you add to this the fact that drivers on this road are notorious for their unwillingness to make way for anyone else, it soon becomes clear why most travel guides suggest tourists and people new to driving in Buenos Aires think twice about taking this road on by themselves. It's much safer and simpler to rely on public transport or cab drivers, and that way you'll reach your destination stress-free. Number 7. The Laguna Garzón Bridge, Uruguay You normally think of bridges as being vital connections that cross obstructions in the landscape, like rivers or valleys, and allow traffic to seamlessly pass by. Of course, depending on the length of the crossing and any particular challenges the region faces, the design of the bridge will be altered, such as considering whether it needs to be resistant to high winds or earthquakes. But probably the strangest designed bridge in the world is the one in Uruguay. 
Known as Laguna Garzon Bridge, your eyes are not deceiving you, and there hasn't been any Photoshop trickery here. It crosses a coastal lagoon in the southeast of the country that's separated from the Atlantic Ocean by a sandbank, and it's on the border between the country's Maldonado Department and Rocha Department. Once only possible to cross by using a ferry that could only hold two vehicles at a time and would only operate in daylight with good weather, the bridge was designed to provide a permanent and reliable crossing that can handle as many as a thousand vehicles a day. It was completed in December of 2015, but rather than looking like a bridge, it seems more like a roundabout suspended above the water. It was designed by a Uruguayan architect called Rafael Vinoli and is a one-way circular route with pathways for pedestrians on both sides, inside and outside of the circle, with crosswalks allowing them to access either side. At a cost of $10 million, the obvious question is, why that shape? And the answer is probably more surprising than you'll expect. Before authorities officially revealed the reason, there were suggestions that it may be to protect a deep water habitat at the center, to be more efficient with the materials that were used and plenty more. But the truth though is that it was built like this because the architect thought it would be cool and that it would force traffic to slow down so drivers would have a chance to look out across that beautiful scenery. Good call, Raphael. Number 6. Judge Harry Pragerson Interchange, LA Los Angeles is known for its extreme traffic, and all the junctions and measures taken to try to alleviate this pressure, the most famous is the Judge Harry Pragerson Interchange. It's where the Glen M. Anderson Freeway, or the I-105, between El Segundo, LAX Airport, and Norwalk meet with the Harbor Freeway, or the I-110, between San Pedro and Los Angeles. And it was named after the federal judge who oversaw the lawsuit surrounding the construction of the I-105. Designed to allow traffic that enters from all directions to also exit in all directions, it reaches more than 130 feet or 40 meters high and also features tracks for the Metro Green Line, bus corridors, and the Harbor Freeway Station. It was opened in 1993 at the same time as the I-105 and is a stack interchange design that's a preferred choice for the connection of two high-volume highways like this is the case here. At the time, it was described as being the biggest, tallest, most costly traffic structure yet built by the California Department of Transportation, and it won a number of awards following its completion because of its effectiveness. And it's become one of the most important interchanges in the whole state. Being near Hollywood, it's also become so famous because of the inclusion in several movies, which you may recognize it from, such as in Speed, where filming took place before it was completed, where the bus had to jump across an incomplete ramp, and in La La Land, when some of the connector ramps were closed for filming of the opening scene. Number 5. Chinchun Interchange, Guizhou Province Located near the city of Wuyang, which is the capital of Guizhou Province in southwest China, is the absolutely insane-looking Chichong Interchange. It's one of the most nightmarish intersections you could ever drive into if you're not already familiar with how it works. The region is particularly hilly, so when the engineers were tasked with finding a way to combine the highways that travel through tunnels towards that area and the orbital roads that serve the city, the only place there was enough room to build a structure was in a canyon. From above, it almost looks like the tracks of a roller coaster, and it can at times feel like that when you're driving through. Construction began in 2009, and it was finally ready to be opened in 2016. It's made up of 18 different ramps that go in eight different directions across five levels. The highest parts reach 180 feet or 55 meters above the ground and connects three main highways as well as several smaller routes into the city. With the ground that was flattened for the project, the area beneath the overpass was turned into a recreational park, as well as being credited with substantially improving the traffic in the city. It's been heralded by locals as a beautiful attraction in its own right. Whether this is true or not is up to what you believe counts as an aesthetic intersection design, but because of its height and the unique landscape it's been built on, you won't find anything that looks quite like this anywhere else on the planet. Furthermore, while those used to traveling in the region are able to find their way around this knot of roads, it's become just as famous for confusing visitors who only realize which lane they should have been in by the time it's too late. And there have been stories of people who have ended up driving around it for hours before finding the exit that they needed. Number 4. Spaghetti Junction, Birmingham the Gravelly Hill Interchange is famous in the UK as being the country's most complex interchange, and because of how it looks, it's more affectionately known as Spaghetti Junction. 
It's not now the only interchange in the world that's known by this name, but after being completed in May of 1972, it was the first. And when you see it from above, you can't help but understand why it's said to look like a bowl of tangled pasta. It's in the country's second largest city, Birmingham, and forms Junction 6 of the M6 motorway at a place where it meets with the A38 Aston Expressway motorway and a number of other local roads. Covering an area of about 30 acres, the M6 actually passes through it, but it's made up of many more miles worth of roads to connect it all together. In total, it serves 18 routes and has 559 columns that were used to elevate 13 and a half miles of roadway over five levels, with a maximum height of 80 feet or about 24 meters. Being the place where so many different transport methods cross paths, it's no surprise that it's seen as such a complex intersection, and one that was famously called the eighth wonder of the world, because you get on it and you wonder how the hell to get off it again. Number 3. Turbine Interchange, Jacksonville because of the nature of road intersections, it's not often that you truly think of one as being aesthetically beautiful, but there's one design that's been used in several places around the world from above definitely looks better than the rest. Known as Turbine Interchange, the best example is the one that's in Jacksonville, Florida, where the I-295 Beltway around the city connects with the J. Turner Butler Boulevard that leads into the city. Costing $80 million to build, it uses elevated circular ramps that are made up of six twin box steel girder bridges that range in length between 325 feet or 99 meters and 1,700 feet or 540 meters. It's got a maximum span of about 282 feet or 86 meters. What's clever about a turbine interchange like this is that they use a left exit, right turning ramps that curve around the center in a spiral and usually have at least 18 overpasses. The alternative to a structure like this would be a much more complicated and less aesthetic four-level stack interchange, like you see in most places around the US to solve a similar problem. But the turbine design is much more preferable if possible. That's because the bridges are usually far shorter, which vastly reduces the maintenance costs, so the overall project is much cheaper in the long run. The only difficulty is that you need much more space to build a turbine, which is not always readily available to developers. Number 2. The Arc de Triomphe, Paris While people in Europe will normally claim that their road systems are some of the best in the world, they aren't necessarily so easy to use for people that aren't used to them. Each country has its own set of rules and customs, so while you find yourself driving on the left-hand side of the road in the UK, you'll also find road signs and junctions that are truly bizarre on the mainland continent, even if you're on the more familiar right-hand side of the road. France in particular is notorious for the interesting driving experience, and it's probably part of the reason why the country has developed such an efficient railway network. Driving through the countryside on the highways is usually relatively calm and relaxed, but once you reach the cities, it's a completely different story. In fact, it's wise to avoid driving in Paris unless you absolutely have no choice, because the congestion and ancient narrow streets means that traffic is gridlocked most of the time. As you travel through the center of the city, you'll approach one of the most famous landmarks, the Arc de Triomphe, and while the structure itself is a sight to behold, the roundabout that surrounds it is probably the craziest intersection you'll ever attempt, so much so that insurance companies will charge you extra if you plan on driving around it. The first thing that's unusual about French roundabouts is that, unlike in most other places, vehicles on the roundabout are required to give way to those that are trying to enter it. This keeps the feeder roads moving, but slows down movement on the roundabout itself, and being the meeting point of 12 straight avenues of central Paris, it's always busy. The main reason it's a crazy place in modern times is, of course, because the road system was designed hundreds of years ago when cars weren't around, and the Parisian authorities have done the best they can to repurpose the streets. In fact, its origins can be traced back to 1670 when it was the point of a convergence of a number of hunting trails. When seen from above, it's one of the most spectacular views in Paris, and it becomes clear why it was known for so long as the Square of the Star. Number 1. Gibraltar International Catering to millions of passengers around the world, airports often have to come up with ingenious solutions to handle the sheer volume of traffic traveling to them each day, and are where you'll find some of the more complex road systems and intersections of all. Probably the craziest, though, is one that wasn't built because of so many cars, because it's actually at a fairly quiet airport, but because of the restricted amount of space to build anything at all. Gibraltar is a British overseas territory that's on the southern tip of the Iberian Peninsula beneath Spain, and it's the gateway of the Mediterranean. 
Covering an area of just 2.6 square miles, or about 6.5 square kilometers, it's home to around 34,000 people and has an airport that handles around half a million passengers a year. It was built during the Second World War, with the runway completed to its current size in 1943, and it's been operational ever since, although with one unusual and almost one unbelievable feature. Because of the territory's size, there was only one route that the main road leading to Spain, called the Winston Churchill Avenue, could take and that was directly across the runway. This meant that Gibraltar is one of the only places in the world where there's a road intersection with an airport runway that's regularly used, and it certainly makes for an unforgettable experience. Barricades would close to prevent vehicles from crossing the runway when planes were about to take off or land, and depending on the time of year, this could happen regularly throughout the day. This was, of course, a situation that couldn't go on forever because of the interruption of traffic flow, particularly with an increasing number of flights using the airport. So the government announced in 2009 that a new highway should be built to bypass the runway. This project was a long time in the making, though, and only recently opened at the end of March in 2023, where the highway now runs through a tunnel beneath the runway instead, with the original intersection now mainly closed. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.